Yeah, we're out here on a beautiful, cool morning in July. Let's see, this is July 22 today. And, uh, of course, we're working mostly in cherry barks down in this end of the tree planting. And it's, uh, there's some difficult decisions to make, mostly working on spacings. But like uh, right over there, that twin you see, that is a honey locust we killed the other day. So that made a space. And uh, I had a forked persimmon. It wasn't a very good one. You can see it laying on the ground. Just dropped that. It hung up in a good tree. I had to chunk it down. And you see I've started on one right here. Now, if I go up that row, the first one you see in that row is a good one. The next one's forked. I'm going to knock that one out. Then the next one's a good one. So I give room to two trees by taking out that forked one. We'll do that. Over here behind me, see I've got a cherry bark, cherry bark, cherry bark, cherry bark. And by knocking this one out in front of me, that gives all of them quite a bit of room. And this one, it's a nice tr big tree, but it forks. And although this one right next to it had almost lost the race, it's still up there. It's still up there in the sky, and uh, by giving it room here, it'll it'll nearly catch up. They respond really well. And you look on down the line there, that one right in the middle, that's a walnut that forks at about three and a half feet up, and it's spread wide. Junky tree, it's got a cherry bark right next to it, and another walnut uh, on the center up there. Another walnut right there. It's not a perfect tree, but a decent tree. It's one right in the middle. But uh, that big, wide spread forked one, <clears throat> I didn't want to drop it. It would spread wide, hitting the ground. So I double girdled him deep. And uh, that'll feed birds. It'll make bugs. And as I get on down here, I'm getting down to the south end of this, running into a patch of uh, pecans. And they're nice and slim and straight. Boy, pecan is the fastest growing hickory there is. And they're showing real good. I hope I can save a few. I'm kind of going on spacing and value on the trees. But I'd like to have a couple of nice pecans in here. They're a fantastic wildlife tree and a good timber tree too. They are really good for cabinetry. And uh, these ones in here are nice and slick. They've been pruning off as they shoot up. Um, Hickories are shade tolerant, and so these trees will fight their way to the top and keep, you know, keep a top going up there. But they shed, and the pecan sheds its lower limbs real good. So, what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm hoping this thing will go without me having to beat on it. Beating on these things wears you down, and I'm, let's see who's going by there. I think that was the missus going by. She went over and checked on the farm so I could come out here and cut. So I'm going to crank up there and finish cutting that. I've got it faced and plunged and one side cut out. And we're trying to drop that on that forked honey locust over there. So I'm going to step up there and buzz that out. And it's good. I'm going to get another drink here. I had to let the vibrations drain off of me. I've been using the uh, 272 we got that little steel 170 and that's a nice easy saw to carry but after using that a few times and then coming out here with the 272 the 272 punches through a tree a lot quicker you know you've got a lot of power but you also got the weight but uh, at least on the first trip out I'll use the 272 and what I'm finding is the 272 out here in the woods will run about an hour and a half and so two fill-ups, you got three hours in, and that's plenty on a hot day, so that's about right. So. Okay, put my water bottle away. Try to hitch up my belt. This belt you see me wearing is a paint belt, made for holding three quart cans of tree marking paint. And. I put two wedges 
on either side and the water bottle and a sweat rag in the middle. And it works real well for me out here. <coughs> yeah, that there you just heard an alarm there. That's Susan driving into our driveway. Okay, here we go. I don't want to choke it, it'll flood because it's warm. Yeah, I might have to choke. Yeah. I wonder why she doesn't want to start. Stand back. There she goes. Good deal. Right onto that honey locust. That's a good deal. And now I'll go up the line and get that next forked cherry bark. Thank you very much for standing by.